Welcome to church. Just a couple of announcements as we uh, gather online again for Hope uh, Alvinson and St. Andrew's Carroll. Summer camps are now taking registrations. We just had a week of uh, praise and worship camp. Uh, we now, the staff are going to have a week off and then they're going to come back with the Brigden Music Camp in two weeks. There's still spaces to sign up for all of the camps, uh, though more and more are signing up. So uh, check our Facebook page and check that out. Also, for the last Explore Camp, we are looking for 15 more 2-liter pop bottles. So we had quite a few, and we're down to like one left or two left, but we need another 15. So if anybody has some, uh, just text or call me and get in touch with some of the camp staff. Fun script orders are uh, coming in or have come in uh, from last month for July, and our August orders will go out on the 16th of August. So just uh, give me uh, uh, some orders over the next little while. Wednesday online Bible study is started up again this summer because of so many limited other things to do. So uh, Charlene Coolin is leading that. Uh, also, today, uh, the July 19th, is our first in-person worship service is Hope and St. Andrew's Carrow. St. Andrew's opened last week in person, and this week will be Hope. Uh, both churches will be open at 9 in the morning at St. Andrew's Carrow and 10.30 at Hope Alvinston. Uh, we will continue these online services for people who are interested uh, for the foreseeable future, at least probably till the end of August. If you'd like to make donations and you're a regular attender of Hope or St. Andrews, uh, contact your local treasurers and donations can be arranged. If there are no other announcements, let's remain seated as we get ready to worship God and declare His greatness. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we come into your presence to worship you here again um, on this virtual service, we thank you and praise you that you are with us. First God, we thank you for being with us in the middle of these crazy times. And please, Lord, as we look into the scriptures that teach us not to be surprised at painful trials that we may be suffering, as though this were a strange thing happening to us, Lord, we ask that you would help us to actually rejoice that we can participate in the sufferings of Christ and trust that in the end we will be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Lord, we need your help to get through these changing and challenging times. So as you've led Abraham in his waiting on the Lord for a son, as you led Joseph as he waited to get out of prison, as you led Ruth through a tragic loss of her husband and family, as you led Mary to be used as the mother of Jesus, please, God, be present and use and lead us. We ask in Jesus' strong name. Meanwhile, God, we praise you for the blessings you've given us, for the praise and worship musical theater camp, that even though it had to adapt to the virus situation, we praise you for those who signed up and how hard the staff and everyone worked. We praise you, God, for... Our churches, like St. Andrews and Hope, who are now open, 
bless and protect people who attend and those who stay at home and watch online. At this time, as we give thanks to you, God, for our blessings, we praise you for the much-needed rain. We also thank you that Frank continues to do well, that Jenny's cousin is also improving, and we praise you that Bill is out of ICU, and while he's still got room to improvement, he's doing better. And we praise you, God, for these and so many other blessings. Gracious God, forgive us for the times we seek our own comfort over growth and not having the same attitude as Jesus towards suffering. Forgive us for those times when we complain rather than realize that sometimes suffering is just a part of the sinful world. So God, forgive us for these or any other sins that come to our hearts and minds. Lord, hear our silent prayers of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to continue to grow and change as you continue the good work that you started within us. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 19. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. 
And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Our responsive reading is taken from Psalm 112 verses 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Let us pray. Lord, as we look into the scriptures, continue to teach us that we might grow as your disciples and that our expectations of life in this world and the next would be in line with your teachings. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. So last week, 
we talked about how Jesus strangely promised persecution and adversity to his disciples. And this week, the whole message builds upon last week's strange promise, saying, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. You see, Jesus and the whole Christian faith, I believe, are realistic about the messiness of this sinful and broken world. And I want us to talk about expectations. I believe that much of the stress and frustration that is affecting our world today is from unrealistic expectations of us having a comfortable and easy world. You see, since the mid-1800s, due to the scientific and technological advances, the world has become, by most accounts, a better place. For thousands of years, the fastest form of transportation were horses, and then along came a steam engine, the automobile, airplanes, spacecraft, and oh, what a difference. The average person can now afford to travel to any place in the world. For thousands of years, the best form of communication was by letter and mail, until the invention of the telegraph, and then the telephone, and then the television radio, and now cell phones and the internet, we can now FaceTime anyone around the world wherever there's internet or satellite coverage. Farming for thousands of years was done by farmers and oxen and horsepower. Until, of course, the advent of steam engines and modern farm technology, which created a green revolution which meant that we went from 80% of our population needed to grow food to feed everyone until today where we have between 2 to 3% of Canadians feeding all of us. This is just three examples of how we 21st century people expect the world to be getting better all the time. And so it's jarring when the worldwide transportation that is such a blessing also spread a virus around the whole world that has kept us home and in relative isolation for the last, well, March, April, May, June, July. We're in our fifth month of lockdown. And because our expectation of constant improvement is so great, when we as humans do not get what we expect, it's often met with anger and frustration. And I think it's the ongoing frustration of the virus coupled with the disgust at the death of George Floyd that has led to all kinds of emotional anger and tension that has created a bit of an emotional powder keg in our world today. There are those who think the troubles we face are so terrible that they want to tear down and destroy civilization as we know it. And while I appreciate their frustration, because I know how frustrated I get, when my cell phone or my computer program glitches and doesn't work as expected. But my children constantly remind me that technology is glitchy and so to be patient. So yes, I am sympathetic with those people's frustrations who want to tear things down. However, as the economic effects of this virus start to be understood and our great expectations of improvement will likely go unfulfilled, Reacting in anger and bitterness is not helpful. In fact, it will actually hurt more people. Rather, we need to trust that even in the midst of this uncertain times, God actually has a plan. I believe the gift that we as believing Christians can bring to this conversation is the word from the Lord. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. You see, the simple fact is unrealistic expectations will crash on the shores of reality. But the good news is that Jesus doesn't leave us stuck in painful trials forever. He will bring us relief and blessings, both in this world and in the next. And Peter wants us to understand, rather than be surprised at the painful trials, that what we may be suffering, we can do it. We can endure it. We can get through it. Why? Because we're not alone. God is with us. And we can actually participate in the suffering that in the end we can be overjoyed with the glory is revealed. That is, Christ's glory is revealed. This is what Jesus wrote. 
Not only did he say, do not be surprised at the painful trials you're suffering as though something strange were happening to you, but verse 13, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. In other words, the painful suffering is never forever and in the fullness of time we will be overjoyed when Jesus' glory is revealed. However, in the meantime, we can, with God's help, be willing to delay our gratification and in some cases delay our gratification even until the kingdom comes in all its fullness. Simply put, growth is gradual and often slow. So the person who wants to sit down and instantly learn to play the piano in just a few days rather than the years of practice it really takes is unrealistic and will constantly be frustrated. Not because their goals are foolish, but because human abilities are limited and will con are limited. So let us not allow our frustrations to destroy our society because if we do, it will hurt so many more people. Rather, just as most people could learn to play the piano if they would not give up, so we need to endure and not give up on God and his plans. Laura has this adult student named Connie. She began lessons after she retired, and in this COVID outbreak, she had a ex piano exam done over Zoom and computer. And she got so excited after she got her result marks, or her, her exam results, because it just so happens she's got the highest mark of any of Laura's students have ever received. Now you see, Connie could have given up saying in retirement, I'll just do what's easy and comfortable, but she didn't. When the virus came, she could have said, well, we'll just quit piano lessons, but she didn't. She could have said, well, with this outbreak, I could just not have the exam, but she didn't. She took time to learn how to use Zoom just to have the exam. Now she's had a real success story and much, be much better and greater satisfaction than if she'd quit. But being patient and persistent she has had a real achievement. But to get it, she had to delay her gratification and do some hard work of practicing. She had to overcome the nerves of learning how to use Zoom in order to take her exam. She had to endure the nerves that come with the feel of failure when you are marked by an examiner. Folks, simply put, life sometimes gets hard. So can Christ help us to endure through the painful times of suffering? Of course he can. And there are two ways that he can do this. One, we keep in goal the mind of why we're enduring this pain. What is the purpose? Secondly, we trust in the promises of Scripture that God will bless us eventually. Today's psalm reading says, Blessed is the person who fears the Lord who finds great delight in his commands. It even goes on to say, even in darkness light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. If we can trust the Lord in the dark and painful times, even if we don't receive a blessing right away, we will be able to carry on, to overcome, and to experience an even better blessing in the fullness of time. In fact, the Bible is full of stories of God's people waiting on the Lord. Noah waited for the flood to go down. Abraham and Sarah waited for about 25 years to have a child. Joseph was stuck waiting in prison in Egypt until he was able to interpret Pharaoh's dreams and then have a chance to become prime minister and to save his whole family from destruction in a, in a time of famine. David was will, was, had to wait for his chance to become the king of Israel without killing Saul. So he had to just wait and wait until... It was his time. Simply put, as God's people, we need to get used to living in times of trouble and waiting 
Because in all of these stories, all of these Bible heroes would have felt like giving up at one time or another, but because they trusted in the Lord and His plans, they kept on and kept on before ever experiencing blessing. So blessing is not because they were so good, but it's because God, the God we worship, was so great. Peter goes on to say in verse 19, So then who, uh, then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. As near as I can tell from this passage and from my own experience of life, if we take the focus off of ourselves and put it on others to help them, the painful suffering will be much more endurable. Over the last two weeks, for whatever reason, my arthritis has been very painful. If I sit around paying attention to my own pain in my body, do you think that will make me feel better or worse? Obviously worse. However, if I keep my focus on the Lord and the mission and purpose He has given me, first as a spiritual leader to our two congregations, and I focus on praying for others who are sick or visiting and calling the lonely, that makes me feel better. And doing whatever needs to be done for camps does not make the pain go away completely, but it puts it into the background where it's better endured. The more I move and keep on moving, the better for my arthritis. Now, do I need to pace myself? Of course I do. But by taking my eyes off of ourselves and looking to Jesus does help me feel better. Last week with the arthritis flare-up, I was planning on days on several days, the need to take out two canoe trailers, one really early at 7.30 in the morning, then getting back and having someone else take the other one out while I borrowed their vehicle they, as they used my van to follow bikers around town and on their day. Well, guess what? Tuesday, I had to go to the drugstore to get some more meds, and I had a, a person come up from the community and say, Hey, Jim, my husband and I have retired and we've been locked down with this COVID. Do you have any volunteer stuff we could do for the camps? And I said, are you sure you want to say that? Yeah. So all of a sudden, I had a second person taking out canoe trailers so I didn't have to. I had another person who was willing to follow the bikes around on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning so I could get the services ready for Sunday, especially since Kara was opening last week. I didn't plan it. I didn't ask for it. But all of a sudden, it was there. And I thanked God for those volunteers. Because they made things go better. Now, in the middle of having my arthritis being very sore that week, did it make me feel like at least God was caring and helping me get through? It absolutely did. And it made me feel better. Did it take away all the pain? No. But it put the pain in the background. And I had something to thank God for. And so I thanked Him. The stress went down, which, of course, helps the pain go down. So, while we live in a time that really, that really wants people to value comfort and ease, again, Jesus' way is different. He not only promises troubles, but he tells us, do not be surprised at the painful trial you're suffering as though something strange were happening to you. You see, this does not mean that life is just terrible. It means that in a sinful world, we will have challenges. But with Christ's help, we can delay the gratification that will make it a better celebration later. And by trusting that he is with us and that the trials will not last forever and he'll help us, he will help us to endure and wait for the right time. Just as Abraham waited for Isaac to be born, Joseph had to wait for the time to interpret Pharaoh's dreams to get out of jail, or David had to wait for Saul to die to become king. And while we wait, what are we to be busy doing? Taking our eyes off of ourselves, finding ways to love and serve the people around us. If we do this, the Lord promises to bless us, and in the end we will have even much more to celebrate. So our attitude towards all of this should be the same as Jesus, and it makes all the difference. To endure, to overcome, and not be surprised. Let's pray. Please, Lord, help us to navigate these changing and challenging times. Help us to be like Abraham and Joseph, who had to wait on you, Lord, for your, their blessings. May we be your adopted children, and in the meantime, while we're waiting, trust in you and do good. Good that keeps the eyes off of ourselves 
and it helps us to keep our eyes on you and on our neighbors who can use some help. So, Lord, let us cast all our cares on you, who will never ever let the righteous fall and will sustain us. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, as we come into your presence again taught by Jesus, we remember that he promised at the Last Supper that in this world we would have trouble, but to take heart because I have overcome the world is his promise. And so, Lord, help us. Help us to understand the sinful nature of our world and so that our expectations would be in line with your teachings. Rather than expecting a life of ease and comfort, we turn to you for strength and wisdom and how to deal with the real trials and troubles we are or we will be facing in this world. God, we do praise you and thank you for the decreasing numbers of cases in Ontario and Canada. And we pray for the United States where the numbers are growing again. Lord, please bless our leaders with wisdom for this challenging time. Bless and guide the leaders of our neighbors to the south as they deal with their situation. Loving God, we continue to ask for your blessings to be upon all the frontline workers in hospitals or nursing homes. We thank you that we only have two active cases currently in Lambton County and no one is in hospital. We praise you for these blessings and we ask that you would bless those who are sick and be with their families. 
We pray as well that as our region is currently in stage two, but hopefully we'll be opening stage three soon, that you would give everyone wisdom on how to live our lives in a way that would help to continue to limit and stop the spread of this virus. We also ask, O oh God, that as doctors and dentists and chiropractors and other healthcare professionals open up, that everyone would be careful and safe. We pray for children at child care centers and for young people at camps. We thank you for how well this past week went and of the week off. We pray that you'd be with the upcoming Music Day Camp, that registrations would go up and that the staff would be well rested for that camp. We also pray, O oh God, that you would be with um, that you would be with all those who are stressed out and worried about this virus. We pray for the stress of being shut down and how, does, what, how it has acted upon families. We continue to pray for the ministry of our two churches. We pray especially that as both churches are now open and have in-person worship services, that you would keep everyone safe and that as people continue to watch online, that you would be with them as well. God, we pray for Jenny's cousin, Dwayne, who's continuing to recover from his bone marrow transplant. Bless him, and we thank you for his continued improvement. We also think of Frank, who is doing well again this week at home. Help him to keep on regaining strength and health. We thank you that Barb has finished her treatments, and bless her and all concerned about her. We continue to pray for others who are facing cancer treatments. We pray for Blossom. We pray for Nancy or in various stages of treatments. And we continue to pray for Lisa, who was back in hospital last week, be with her and her family as they work out uh, next steps of treatment for her. God, we continue to pray for Bill, who is now out of ICU. He's doing better, but we pray that you would help him to regain some strength before coming home. We pray for Larry, who's continuing to recover from his second knee surgery. Lord, as we continue to pray for the Havis family, uh, word received on Friday that Lyle's dad did pass away, and God, we ask that you be with the family over these next days, weeks, and months, especially Lyle's mom. We ask this in Jesus' name. We also pray for all those who are mourning the loss of lo loved ones. Locally, we have lost Robert Blackmore, Blackmore from Alvinston. Be with his family and friends and anyone else who is mourning loved ones. Finally, God, for any other concerns that weigh heavy upon our hearts and minds, we lift them to you now in silence. Lord, hear our silent prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers and answer according to your will and power and might. We ask in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.